Kay here um, with just a quick review on the Anycubic Cobra Plus which is the new mid-range machine um, new to the network from Anycubic. Um, you would have seen my unboxing and build video where right now I'm printing a calibration cube just to see what the layer heights are like with my Cura profile that I've created. Um, the Cura profile that I've created is on the version 4.12 this is really just an ad adapted version of the um, Cura profile that's supplied on the SD card from Anycubic. Um, I tend to make some basic changes to that, so i.e. retraction speeds and uh, temperature of the build plate um, and initial layer. Just simple things like that. Um, not too much needs to be changed to be fair. Um, as you can see the first layer has gone down well. I'm using a brim with this just to see what the adherence is like. Currently I have my Z offset at 0.05 which I found was adequate um, on my Endocubic Cobra Max um, and once again it seems to be working fine at the moment. The temperature I have for the nozzle at the moment is 195 and the bed temperature is 60 and we're running at a print rate of 100%. Um, the speed that I've selected on my Cura profile is um, so the travel speed that we have got at the moment is 80 mms, so it's quite fast. Um, the maximum that I would normally go for any sort of calibration um, procedure is about 8, 60 between 60 and 80. What you really want to do is not go for speed, you want to go for quality just to get the real true feeling. If you have access to my Cura profile, just request it in my description and through my link tree. Um, in that link tree you will have access to my Anycubic Cobra Max profile which has worked well for people and myself and also you can have access to the brand new Cobra Plus. Um, I don't have the Cobra Basic so um, unfortunately I don't have that but I'm sure on most of the uh, Facebook communities um, that's available. Um, yeah so like I say first thoughts really um, since the unboxing. Um, the algae code printed really well as you've seen in the video um, I'm going to be trying some larger prints on this just to really give it a test but overall thoughts on the build really really easy really easy to follow the instructions um, but also um, it was a lot less um, difficult to store this particular machine in comparison to the Cobra Max. The Cobra Max does take up a large footprint in terms of size. This is sort of between your normal Cobra and Cobra Max so however it's still quite big but not big enough to actually be difficult to incorporate into your printing network. Um, the, the actual nozzle is um, exactly the same as the Cobra Max, so it's the Volcano. Um, it's got a dual cooling, so to the left and to the right, and then we've got the cooling on, on for the, um, the actual nozzle itself on the front. Um, once again, it's a ribbon cable, which is it's a lot easier to um, connect up the wires. Um, it looks tidier as well. So on this particular machine, you have the dual Z access as well with the screw thread, which is also like the Cobra Max, um, has the support uh, belt at the top. Um, this keeps it secure, you don't get any Z wobble with that. The spool holders to the left, much like the Cobra Max. Um, I also like the, um, the actual name of the, mach the actual machine on the side, I think it looks nice with that brush steel, I think it really does make it pop really. Um, like I said in the Cobra Max video, I'm not too keen on this particular part being exposed, I think there's really no reason why that couldn't have sort of the shroud could have come over a little bit more to be honest with you I think aesthetically it would look better um, but overall that's very small the other thing that I've noticed on this which hopefully I brought up in my unboxing was that you have a toolbox much like um, some of your other range of products that you can buy um, but it wasn't it, it wasn't available on the Cobra Max due to the size and the actual build. Um, but yeah, once again, you can put all your tools in there. I like that. It's on a little snap. It's not magnetic. It's just a plastic snap. Just clicks into place. Um, so on the machine, you have only the single 
tension belt on the runner rail at the bottom. Um, like in the build, I mentioned that you have um, six rollers on the bottom, so the three on the left are fixed rollers and the three on the right are your eccentric nut rollers. I found that they were all loose and um, the bed on the initial build was wobbly, um, so I did have to tighten those. All three needed to be tightened. My suggestion for you all, like in my previous videos, is to do the back one first, then the front one, then the middle one. What that stops is the um, misalignment of the bed. You want it as square as possible. And then over to the right, you have the tension belt for the, um, the filling head. Um, on the Cobra Max, it's a dual tension rail at the front. Um, and on the filling head, you've just got the one. Um, I found that that's a lot easier to use. Um, you can change it. it over time. The belts do sort of stretch. Um, and it also depends on the temperature as to how they are, they're affected. Obviously, the warmer the environment, the belts are made of rubber, so they can sort of expand very slightly. But um, yeah, like I say, overall, very happy with this machine. I think um, it needed it. It needed to introduce the mid-range between the Cobra and Cobra Max. I think going from really small build to sort of a maximum build, um, it really needed something in between. So by bringing out this, I think it completes the Cobra um, network profile. So I've got these machines, it completes that whole series. In terms of modifications, I know that quite a lot of people aren't too keen on the, um, the glass bed. Um, obviously on the, the basic original Cobra, there's the flexi plate. I think people are quite keen on that. Um, and both on the Cobra Max and on the Cobra Plus. You do have the glass bed. Um, I always say just let the bed cool down, but not everyone's in that um, position where they can take time to do that. Um, so it is awkward. Let's say I, what I do is I place a fan next to it and cool it down even quicker. Um, doesn't take much more than 20 to 30 minutes to get it to pop off, but obviously it really depends on what you're printing as to how easy it pops off as well. As I say, I've never had any issues, but if you do force it while it's hot, you are likely to tear the actual material on the glass bed. So if you really want to damage the bed, that's probably what you're going to do. So I would suggest taking your time. Like I described in the previous video, you've got your um, computer network connection there and your SD card slot there, uh, much like the Cobra Max. It's front facing, which is ideal. Now on this machine, you do have the power um, selection whereas on the Cobra Max you don't, it's automatically attuned to wherever you are, which is ideal. And um, But if you do purchase this, do make sure it's at the back of the machine, it's on the power unit, flick your switch, uh, between depending on what, what um, country you're in. Um, I believe I flicked it onto the 230, which is the UK standard, but everywhere else I believe is, is different do make sure you flick that switch because you are likely to damage your motherboard um, and render the, the actual printer useless. What else is there to really describe? So in the unboxing I noticed there was lots of cable ties again much like the Cobra Max. There was the foam packaging on the nozzle um, underneath the carriage so it was the top and the bottom and there was a cab one cable tie on there. There was two cable ties on each of the Z-Rods and there was also a larger cable tie on the single runner rail underneath. Do not leave them on. Um, before you start printing, make sure you check everything. Do not rush into printing. Ultimately, whatever you miss is likely to cause some serious damage. Whether it, I mean, simple things like um, not connecting up um, wires and stuff like that. They're very simple things. You're, you're just not gonna get it to either turn on or it's not gonna work properly. So that's, that's relatively simple to fix, just do a, um, a check through everything. But if you're leaving cable ties on, I've seen quite a lot of the group, um, Facebook groups that I'm in, people have done that. And they've possibly got away with it, but some might not have, um, and you can, damage, you can damage so much on the machine. Um, the motors, the rail, the, uh, the actual tensioners, everything. So just, just make sure, just do a visual. There's not a lot going on. It's, it's fairly easy to actually see. Just take your time with it. And um, like I say, that was just a quick calibration review of the Cobra Plus. Um, like and subscribe to my channel. 
um, feel free to drop into the description and take uh, request my Cura profile for this machine and if you have the Cobra Max feel free to uh, request that also. Um, as I always say to all of my followers, my Cura profile isn't the be all and end all and it's certainly not possible so you may not get the perfect print from my Cura profile but it'll be a great start. So yeah, anyway that's 3 the UK, like and subscribe, take care.